BioBalance HealthCast episode 227. Do women need testosterone? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Brett Newcomb and this is Dr. Kathy Maupin. And we are talking this week, uh, hopefully you're coming back for a continuation of a discussion that we were having uh, in our previous podcast about the speech that Kathy was asked to give to the uh, medical conference in Orlando last April. And she was asked to come and talk about women and testosterone because she's written a book called The Secret Female Hormone. Uh, and the reference there is that testosterone is generally thought of still, even by medical practitioners who should know better, as a male hormone. And they all acknowledge, well, yeah, women have it too, but they don't really seem to acknowledge, at least in our experience, mm -hmm. that it's as important to women as it is to men. And so we're going to begin today's conversation by a reference from Kathy's speech about that topic. And why do they say it's not a woman's hormone? I guess... It's simplification. It makes it easier to say men are from Mars, women are from Venus, men have testosterone, women have estradiol. I'm not sure, but it's causing a lot of trouble for us getting testosterone and actually having insurance reimbursement if they won't acknowledge that it's our hormone. That's, the one, that's one of the studies that I send to insurance companies. So testosterone's role is much the same as men's. If you think of what men get out of testosterone, we get the same stuff too, but we don't have commercials. Nobody's out there pitching it for us, but we get the same stuff. I mean, we get great muscle and bone. We get, we get a waistline back, I and mean, guys do too, but we get our energy, our motivation. And remember that memory part? Any women in here who have not replaced your testosterone yet, but when you can't remember the label for something like that great restaurant, that best friend down the street, the street number of your daughter, I mean, if you, when you can't, Remember a label, that's low testosterone. And that is one of the things I ask people specifically to see if I really need to look at them closely and if I need to give them more or if I need to actually decide that I have to look at something else to, to take care of their symptoms. All of what has been said here comes down to a simple fact that we have been told for years that we don't have testosterone and men do which makes us, it's kind of that, um, I kind of have testosterone envy, you know? It's one of those. We don't have something that men have, testosterone envy. So they keep bringing this up. Every research article says at the very beginning, women have very small amounts of testosterone. Not sure what they're comparing that to. They still believe it in the research community. They still say it out loud in medical conferences. They still tell doctors in the mainstream that this is true when it is absolutely not true. Right. It is a lie that's been told long enough. We now believe it. So you have to stop believing that lie. Women have testosterone. Men have testosterone. We don't have as much, but we still have it. And it still has the same effects on us as it does on men. It improves our sex drive. It improves our, our muscle bones, mass. Bone our density. muscle mass, our strength, mm -hmm. our intelligence, our spatial intelligence. I mean, that's a part of the brain it works on. It also improves our recall of names and places so that we, when we lose our testosterone, we become adult, and I think some people like us that way, but I don't, and I don't think any woman should be that way because she doesn't have any testosterone. So we are different. Men, men are from Mars, women are from Venus in personality, but we have many similar qualities. God made us similar in many ways. Every one of our glands work the same. Every one of our, our systems work the same with some variations. So physiologically, in many ways, we are the same, especially about mm -hmm. testosterone. We may talk about the difference in ratios, but women have and make testosterone in the same ways and for the same reasons that men have and make testosterone. The volume is different. And mm -hmm. as they age, the, the decline in volume is different. Uh, the difference but, is women, when their ovary stops working with menopause, right. and before that they have a decrease in testosterone at menopause, mm -hmm. it's over. Their testosterone is is 
is minimal. And that's different because men never really get to a an almost nothing level. They have low levels. They don't and levels below which by which they function. Yeah, in general, that's true for men. I mean, some but men, women run out completely. Right. And that's a different. That's a difference in why we need it and why we need it earlier. Why you need it replaced? Than replaced yes. than men. Yeah. If we are to compete and to be, live as long as our spouses and in a healthy manner. So then let's talk about the roadblocks for why you can't have it, why you can't get it. We've mentioned some already. The conventional wisdom, the political manipulation of certain conservative members of Congress who who, who still believe the conventional political uh, cultural it's wisdom. Kind of, it's like keeping women out of the church. I'm sorry. You got you can't keep women out of the church. Well, and you, you, can't, you can, and, but you're going to have a different kind of church than, right, uh, right. than you would want to go to. Right. That's yeah. true. And and that's the same thing. They want to keep us out. And I, and and basically because we're inferior cuz we don't have testosterone. We don't think as clearly. But the thing is it's the same thing as when I went to medical school. It's and so went to funny. residency. It's like, no, girls. My my professor in U- University of Missouri, God rest his soul, Doctor Hall, said you can't be a doctor. You don't look like one. You're just as smart as one, but you're not. You can't be an OBGYN. You need a home ec. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy said, you can't be an OBGYN. You well, won't make it. When I grew up in Arkansas. I've been an OBGYN in the, for 29 years. In the 1960s and 70s, there was a state representative who dominated the state house. His name was Paul Van Dossum. He'd been in office for 22 years. He ran the place. and Before term limits. He was running for re-election, and he made the statement that we should keep women, uh, that women should be barefoot and pregnant and in the kitchen. And that way we wouldn't have as much social upheaval and problems as we were having in the 60s. That cost him his seat. I hope it did. They they kicked him out. I hope it did right then. Even in the last election, there are politicians around the country who are still saying those kinds of things. So a lot of people still believe this. And that's why it's an uphill battle. And you're trying to get the message out to say that women uh, need to have this, deserve to have this. It's original to them. Uh, Their bodies make it. Uh, But there are roadblocks. So let's look at your clip uh, talking about the roadblocks that women face, whether they're societal, political, regulatory. Okay, so the roadblocks to people knowing this. You need to know this if you're talking to patients and they say, why haven't I heard this? Well, it's an orphan medical specialty. Most of the research is done in endocrinology journals. Endocrinology rarely takes care of sex hormones. But they've got tons of stuff in those journals about pregnancy and all kinds of estrogen and testosterone issues for both men and women, but endocrinologists aren't using it. So that information never crosses over to ACOG or urology. So it's an orphan medical specialty. All that research and no one to read it. It doesn't have a name, so I named it testosterone deficiency syndrome because it's not andropause, that's men's. So we need our own name. And it's not perimenopause because it has nothing to do with estrogen, has nothing to do with the loss of estrogen. It comes way before that. It's the first thing to go. And symptoms in research are researched with testosterone and one symptom, never the group of symptoms. I realize that that's much more difficult to do in research, but they aren't calling it a syndrome. All these symptoms that go along with it uh, are there, and they should look at all of them together. One of the things uh, that blocks us from being able to acknowledge testosterone as a female hormone is within the research community. Mm -hmm. The research community has all the research on hormones, both sex hormones, like estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, and even research on on pregnancy complications in the area of endocrinology. Mm -hmm. That's not the area of OBGYN who are taking care of women who go through menopause. So the, the research is not in the American College of OBGYN's literature. They will not put in anything from another specialty, believe it or not. Interesting. And the Endocrine Journal is very more, much more open-minded. They have research for, from other places. Specialties. From Europe. They have mm-hmm. research from Italy. They have research from all over the world. It's a worldwide specialty. And 
they cover every hormone. Now, do endocrinologists treat menopause or andropause or any of the sex hormones? No. It's a big disconnect. It is an orphan science. So I'm stepping into the breach. Right. And I'm taking all the information I have from reading all of the journals and listening to all of the uh, podcasts and all of the um, internet information from the Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism and taking it to use with what I know from OBGYN and putting these together. It is truly a new specialty. Well, and another observation that you regularly make is that part of the reason that this hasn't been adjusted as more of this knowledge becomes available, like the internet lets us find a lot of it, uh, it's because it doesn't have a name. It's not only an orphan mm-hmm. science, it's an unnamed syndrome, is the case mm-hmm. that you argue in your book, The Secret mm-hmm. Female Hormone. And, and so you propose a name for it. Testosterone deficiency syndrome, very very <laughs> non-creative, but it, that, it describes it perfectly. And it is it is actually true, but what's happened is, They had to have a name for all these things that happened to us before 40 and when we went through menopause. So they called it Mm pre-menopausal syndrome. Well, yeah, it's pre-menopausal, but it isn't right next to menopausal or perimenopausal. It's it's not right next to menopause. It can happen 10 years before. So it's a misnomer. Mm -hmm. That does not capture it. And menopause has to do with no estrogen, not no testosterone. So it is related to the wrong hormone. So we should say what it is, you know. Testosterone deficiency uh, yeah. syndrome. And, and so uh, if you suffer from it and it's not treated or it's treated in a shotgun approach as we try to identify an intervention for dementia or an intervention for osteoporosis or an intervention for uh, belly fat, mm-hmm. then we don't see a more global perspective. Right. So what then are the long-term effects of suffering from TDS? The diseases of aging. If you don't replace testosterone, that, then the things that happen associated with aging are going to happen faster and more, and more severely. So the structural diseases that occur, osteoporosis, sarcopenia, if anybody doesn't, wasn't here earlier, that's loss of muscle mass, and that's what really makes people unable to live alone. They can't get around. They don't have any muscle. They're, they're, all, they're all bent over. That's not their bones. That's their muscles. And testosterone maintains muscle mass. Frailty is the outcome of sarcopenia, where people are, like, breakable. They're like little glass dolls. And you have to be very careful because they look like they're going to break. And they can't take care of themselves because they're afraid. If they step off a curb, they might break something. And then, of course, obesity. Testosterone is, the, is one, of, one of the functions of testosterone is to make you insulin sensitive. So it, um, it actually combats obesity. And as a skeptic, I think, okay, you're saying that testosterone replacement is a global panacea for getting old. If you just get testosterone, you know, you'll live happily forever. Are you really saying that? No. I mean, that's, that's why it's a global panacea. There is no global panacea. <laughs> exactly. But... But many of the things, many of the diseases or conditions that we treat Mm -hmm. are related to the loss of testosterone. I didn't say everything. Testosterone doesn't cure cancer. Doesn't. In fact, it doesn't cure uh, Alzheimer's. It doesn't cure dementia. Okay. It it is a prevention. It is a preventive step. I've had patients call me and ask me if I would treat their parents who have. Who I Already have, have it. dementia, yeah. and I can't. That doesn't work no. that way. The, all the studies are on preventing and delaying the onset of te- of al- Alzheimer's and dementia by decreasing the mechanisms, decreasing inflammation, decreasing um, decreasing plaque buildup on the neurons, and decreasing insulin resistance. Because now we know Alzheimer's has has a relationship to pre-diabetes or insulin resistance. They call it now the uh, type 3 diabetes. Really? I'm not aware of that. And that has to do with uh, triglycerides and blood sugar and the onset of diabetes. Beyond just insulin. Okay, so in our book, 
the what the analogy that you use to uh, initiate this discussion mm -hmm. is the analogy of a domino. Like when you, when you see these guys that stack up dominoes and they mm -hmm. push the first one over and then everything just cascades mm -hmm. from there. And so you talk about the domino effect and the aging cascade mm -hmm. is the loss of testosterone. It's mm -hmm. like that is the key that opens the door to those uh, deterioration issues of human aging. It's that push and then the dominoes. Yeah. What we call aging mm -hmm. is the uh, lack of, of body strength, muscle mass. It's the onset of wrinkles and loss of skin tone. So visual cues. It's visual cues. It's, it's, a, it's the physical that is becoming um, like dehydrated and, and uh, thin and, and, well, and not fat necessarily. But, but when you haven't seen thin. somebody for a while and then you see them, like we were watching the Oscars the mm -hmm. other day and my wife looked at one of the actors and she's like, oh my God, he's gotten old. Right. You know, just right. all of a sudden. The, because the there's visual... a thing that we have in our brain about yeah. what old is. It's right. gray hair. It's uh, loss of weight for women, loss of waistline, mm -hmm. uh, larger hips, lower bra breasts or longer yeah. bra, um, uh, really ugly, veiny hands. Right. Age uh, spots. Yeah. Age spots. Or liver uh, spots, as they call them. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, uh, or h fat hanging out, you know. Yeah. Um, Pardon me while I suck yeah. that in. <laughs> yeah. And, and for men, belly fat. Mm. And I saw one actor who it made me, who made me very sad because he was like this. Yeah. He was like this. Already so, bent over. Already like old bent people are. over. Yes. And to me... That's like the first, that's a sign of a beginning osteoporosis right. and the lack of muscle mass to hold you straight. Yeah. So he's, and no matter if he exercises or eats right, that's not coming back without testosterone. And testosterone takes a while to get your bones to come back. So okay. that so. showed me that he hadn't been doing that. But so, so there's so many other things we relate to aging, um, the onset of diabetes, heart disease, um, loss of libido, loss, loss of libido, loss mm -hmm. of relationships, becoming memory, more short term independent. memory loss. Um, yeah, that's besides Mood, Alzheimer's, depression, anxiety. So, A lot of those things either coexist or comorbid, or they're they're masked by some other more pressing perception or illness, mm -hmm. when you treat that other perception or remove it, then the underlying thing surfaces. That's right. And and so, yes, testosterone's the trigger. Yeah. Okay. And yes, if we go back to the trigger and replace the trigger, we can often, I'm not saying always, repair what has been lost yeah. down the line. And I see it every day. Right. I mean, this is, this is a... For 12 visual years now. Yeah. twelve year study in my office of people coming in ill and leaving well right. and well in the way that we have control of their diabetes we have control of their uh, their uh, weight issues their, their weight. memories improve their muscle mass improves they stand upright they walk they have balance they're not fragile I mean truly it, it's truly awesome. I mean it's an and amazing it's, thing to watch it's, it's the reason if we can review for a second that we are doing this podcast and others on the talk that Kathy gave she she was asked to give this talk to physicians and physician assistants, nurse assist, uh, uh, nurse, nurse, help me. What's the word? <laughs> nurse uh, practitioners. practitioners. Thank you. Uh, because she's written a book called The Secret Female Hormone. And what we are trying to do with these podcasts is inform you so that you can speak to your physician. You can go and read the material or give the material to them to say, can we consider this in terms of my own treatment or my own aging issues? And so hopefully you will go to Kathy's websites, uh, Dr. Kathy Maupin, Biobalance Health, and or The Secret Female Hormone, and get a copy of our book, Discuss these things with your doctor, educate yourself and them so that your aging process will be better for you. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314 314- 993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. 
find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.